Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're gonna to go through the key terms for 2.6 retrieving memories. This is the AP Psychology um, unit number two. Okay, so let's get started. So today I'm just going to go through the key terms for this unit. I'm gonna give you a definition. I'm gonna give you an example. If you like the content, please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna keep going on these new units and hopefully you're finding them helpful. Let's get started. Okay, so we're looking at the key terms that are associated with this particular CED question. Explain how memory retrieval processes get information out of memory. Okay, these are the words that we're gonna go through today. So let's go. We're gonna start with memory retrieval. So the definition of memory retrieval is memory retrieval is the process of recalling information stored in the brain. It's not that hard, right? So for example, remembering the name of a person you met last week is an instance of memory retrieval. You are retrieving that memory of having met that person and that person's name. Recall. Recall is the act of retrieving information from memory without the help of cues. So an example of recall is when a student answers an essay question on an exam by retrieving information learned during study sessions without any prompts. You are recalling that information. You will be doing that during this AP exam. <laughs> so, Recognition. Recognition is the ability to identify information you have previously learned when it is presented to you again. So for example, recognizing a vocabulary word and its meaning on a multiple choice test is an instant, uh, instance of recognition. So when you're doing your MCQs and you're seeing all these words that we're talking about in our key term videos, that is recognition. Context-dependent memory. Context-dependent memory refers to the improved ability to retrieve information when you're in the same environment or context where the memory was formed. So for example, you might better recall facts studied in a specific classroom when you're sitting in that same classroom during the exam. Mood congruent memory. Mood congruent memory refers to the tendency to recall information that is consist consistent with one's current mood. So for example, when you're happy, you're more likely to remember positive events of details or details, sorry, not of details. <laughs> Okay, state-dependent memory. State-dependent memory refers to the phenomenon where people remember information better when they're in the same physical or mental state as they were when the memory was formed. So for example, if you learn something while feeling very alert, you might recall it better when you're also alert. If you're really rested, or we talked about it in another video, maybe if you or you had a lot of caffeine, but again, I don't recommend that, but you, whatever state you're in when you are learning the information is if you can replicate that that, that will improve your recall. Retrieval practice. Retrieval practice is a learning technique where recalling facts or concepts from memory is used to enhance and boost long-term memory retention. So for example, repeatedly testing yourself on the material you've learned in class, like using flashcards or taking practice quizzes, is an example of retrieval practice. At the end of this video, I'm going to flash the words. We're going to be doing retrieval practice. You're going to be retrieving the definition and an example for each of those words. Testing effect. The testing effect is the improved memory retention from being tested on material as opposed to simply rereading it or reviewing it. So for example, students who take practice tests after studying a chapter often remember the material better in the long run compared to those who only study the material without taking the test. I think I've said this before, I'm an SAT tutor as well, and I always have the kids do the practice tests. And you do it with your AP classroom, your MCQs also, or if you take old tests from the college board to practice. practice the types of questions, practicing the material that is going to be the exact same way presented on the test and applying all the things you've learned is much better at uh, achieving higher scores. Metacognition. Metacognition is the awareness and understanding of one's own thought processes. It involves monitoring and controlling cognitive activities. So for example, a student using metacognition might realize they don't understand a key concept in their notes, then decide to reread it Reread the sorry, reread the material or ask for help. You need to adjust your study strategy based on your self-assessment. It's also about learning how you study. So when you're looking at something and you think, okay, I'm gonna see all these key terms, but I just I don't learn enough by just listening to somebody say them. I need to write them down as well. That's just adjusting your studying to basically do well when you have to recall it. Okay, let's do some retrieval now. So when you see memory retrieval. What do you think? What's the definition of this? And what is an example? You can pause the video to answer that. Now recall, definition, example. 
recognition. Definition, example. Context-dependent memory. What is the definition? What is an example? Mood congruent memory. What is the definition? What is the example? State dependent memory. Give me a definition and an example. Retrieval practice. An example and a definition or the other way around. Testing effect. Definition and example. Metacognition, definition and example. And those are all the key terms for 2.6. Hope you have found that helpful. And like I said, always try to figure out how you learn best. Is it going to be writing those on flashcards? Is it going to be doing your Quizlets on the computer? Is it going to be just be listening to me tell you the definitions and examples? Whatever works for you best so that on test day, you can retrieve those and you can apply them to the AP exam. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. I'm really trying to get those numbers up. It would be great. And I appreciate any uh, comments comments that you can leave or if you have any specific questions or if you want me to do something else to do with this new AP curriculum or AP psychology curriculum let me know and I will definitely do my best to do that thank you so much have a great day see you next time